Chapter 14, Three First Names. July 1856. Now, whilst my husband's home, they come when they come, Miss Elizabeth said. Both women sewed bolts of gray fabric, but James noticed that Ma's done end folded into a thick pile at her feet while Miss Elizabeth struggled with every stitch. Thee doesn't understand, Ma said. Thee may not bring thy pilgrims when Mr. Weaver is in the house. They come when they come, Miss Lisbeth said again. They come like the tide which God himself cannot hold back. Lisbeth Charles, thee is the most stubborn mule of a woman I have ever encountered. James looked up from his sketchbook to see if Ma had some teasing in her face, but her brow was wrinkled and her lips pressed tightly together as if she were holding pins. James was close enough to hear her grind her teeth. My husband comes home tomorrow. Thee may not stay here any longer. Too soon, Miss Lisbeth said. Tomorrow, Miss Lisbeth put her sewing aside and walked over to the cold grate of the fireplace. It seemed to James that she was ticking things off in her mind. A great list with check marks beside each item. Finally, she said, I won't bring them to the door if the flag isn't out. I'll keep going with them to the next station. But if thee is here whilst my husband is in the house, thee must stay in the small room upstairs. Thee must not show thy face. And so James guessed they came to some womanly agreement because Mom said nothing more about Miss Lisbeth leaving for a while. I so much faster when I talk, she said, settling back into the rocking chair. She held her needle in midair. It never found the fabric. Mr. James Weaver, have you heard about Miss Ellen Craft? She escaped in a wondrous way. No, Miss Lisbeth, he said, trying not to sound too rude. The little prairie church he had in his mind just wouldn't come into clear focus on the paper. Must have been must because Miss Lisbeth was talking on and on. From Georgia, she was a brave woman, a slave. Amen. Amen, James said, thinking that would be the end of it. Her father was a white man. Her master, to be sure, Miss Ellen Craft, was light enough to pass for white. And she had a great love in her life. William Craft, he was, they were as married as slaves could be. This wasn't yesterday or today before. This was 18 and 48, long time ago. She escaped? How? Why was Ma encouraging Miss Lisbeth? Nearly the Christmas, before dawn, Ellen and William left their cabin, said goodbye to no one, not even her mother. They went to the railroad station to begin their journey. Thee means, thee means the Underground Railroad? No, ma'am, I mean the legal, above the ground, on the tracks, riding in a train railroad station. And Ellen Craft rode in first class, too. How was she able to manage that? Ma asked, her f flying fingers pulling thread through the fabric. She passes a rich southern planter gentleman in a fine black suit and cloak, some high-heeled boots with a glassy shine, a gentleman's top hat, but a half-blind cat would notice right away that this gentleman had no proper beard. So William fixed a muffler around Ellen's face like a poultice, as if she was ailing something fierce from a toothache. And those pretty girl eyes, they hid behind thick green frame glasses. Very imaginative, Ma said. But the Bible frowns on women dressing in a real in a raiment of men. Yes, Ms. Weaver, and the Bible frowns on treating human beings like beasts of burden. Why, I heard a preacher once say, even the beasts of the field had his Sabbath day of rest. Mr. James Weaver, are you listening? Yes, Ms. Lisbeth, he groaned. Maybe that steeple was just too tall. He lopped off the point by hiding it in clouds. Better. And that's not all. William did Ellen Craft up at an invalid as an invalid so no one would know she couldn't read or write like a gentleman should put her arm in a sling so she couldn't sign the register in all those fine hotels where she put her hand head down each night she hobbled with a cane he said she was deaf so she'd never have to talk what a sight she must have been ma said and william he went with her as her he went with her as her manservant Ms. Lisbeth laughed look up her sewing again. First time it wasn't the other way around, a wife being the servant to the husband. James asked, Are you married, Miss Lisbeth? 
was. The subject was clearly closed, and no one said anything for the longest time, which gave James some hope. Then she started in again. Four days they traveled from Georgia to South Carolina, to North Carolina, to Virginia, to Washington, to Baltimore, and finally to Philadelphia. How many boats and trains would you guess, Mr. James Weaver? He had no idea. More than six? Three boats and five trains. And mind, neither one of them could read a sign, a ticket, a word of any language. Don't dare ask anyone either. It's a miracle they found their way. I guess they followed the drinking gourd, James said, slamming his book shut. So what happened? Before the popping eyes of those white men in Philadelphia, Ms. Ellen Craft transferred herself from a sickly southern gentleman into a beautiful, strong woman. A preacher married them proper, and they went to Boston to give lectures. Got to be pretty famous. Why, yes, Ma said. I do believe I remember hearing about them. Amen, James said. Not quite. Some president, his name was Millard Fillmore, he sent 600 soldiers to Boston to capture Allen and William Craft. Imagine 600 soldiers after two free black souls. Amazing. Miss Malone never told them about this. And then what happened? Sailed for England very fast. A fugitive is safe there. Not like here. James was surprised to hear Ma asked, Has thee a child? No child, Miss Weaver. I lost my Matthew Luke Charles before we were blessed with a child. That's assuming getting born into slavery is a blessing. Tell us about Matthew Luke, James said. Mr. Charles to thee, son. He had three first names, Miss Lisbeth said with a chuckle. How did he die? asked James. Well, Miss Lisbeth said indignantly, you think I'm going to tell you how he died before I say how he lived? Then how did he live, Miss Lisbeth? Very, very well, he replied. She replied, puffing up with pride. Rich for a while, Signing papers, meeting with all manner of businessmen. Mr. Charles, then he wasn't an African? James asked. Of course he wasn't an African, Ma said. A free man, no doubt. No, Miss Weaver, not a free man. He was the son of a slave, and he was the son of a slave master. Ouch, yelled Miss Lisbeth. This needle came right up and stuck me. She popped her finger into her mouth. And so, Ma gently prodded, I'm sewing as fast as I can, what with my finger bleeding. I mean, tell us more about thy husband. Miss Lisbeth peered at them over the finger she was sucking. Time's not right. But Miss Lisbeth, James protested, Amen and Salah, she said, and her lips were sealed.